Thank you. Thank you. Minister, you're very welcome in, into the Chamber today and congratulations um, on your position. So I welcome the opt-in regarding enhanced police cooperation uh, against human trafficking. An international approach to this issue is of critical importance in tackling human trafficking. By its hu uh, nature, human trafficking is dependent on well-organised and international criminal networks. One challenge in this area of work faced by the, the Gardaí is the difficulty prosecuting human traffickers due to the international nature of the enterprise. So enhancing their powers and cooperation with foreign police services such as Europol is a welcome development. But I would like to see on Garda Siakana, the human trafficking unit, strengthened in numbers as only 16 people are currently employed in that department. 16 people, Minister. So this unit is understaffed and I want you to fix that please. Currently on a national level the Criminal Law Bill 2023 is in the Dáil and proposes key reforms that will benefit Ungarda Siakana in their work policing human trafficking and exploitation. By making the National Referral Mechanism uh, for Victims of Human Trafficking a uh, statutory provision is of huge benefit to bringing those who perpetrate these crimes uh, to justice. This mechanism provides for cooperation between the state organisations, government departments and civic society groups which assist victims of human trafficking to ensure adequate resourcing and support is available, especially when victims choose to come forward, for, come forward and report a crime. However, the 2023 Trafficking in Persons uh, Annual Report ranked Ireland as failing to meet the minimum standards in victim identification, referral and assistance. This is frankly appalling. A study showed 88% of trafficking victims engaged in with the healthcare system during being trafficked, but less than 1% are identified. We must train all healthcare workers in identifying trafficking. While the HSE are listed as a competent authority in the Irish Bill, the Department of Health are not which will limit the scope of engagement of non-public health care workers. If we are serious as a nation about this vital issue, we must ensure all health care professionals are adequately trained and supported in identifying trafficking victims. Yesterday, Annette Kennedy and Anne-Marie Ryan of the Health and Social Care Education Trafficking Group came to Leinster House and highlighted vital issues in relation to identifying trafficking. They noted that dentists, physiotherapists and even social workers do not typically receive training in identifying trafficking. If the Department of Health are, to, are listed as a competent authority, the Dental Council, Carew and many other regulatory bodies will be within the remit to train their members on identifying trafficking because trafficking people used the broad spectrum of health services. By including this training in the codes of uh, professional conduct in these bodies, this will then directly impact the educational institutions for these medical professionals and will equip all medical staff, public and private, trained and qualified in how to identify trafficking. Beyond healthcare professionals, those who work with civic society groups who assist human trafficking victims or assist those coming into Ireland seeking international protection, it is critical to implement licences for professionals working to ensure oversight and regulation of these services. Many people operate in this space as consultants without any specific certification or credentials, and it's vital for the success of an initiative to regulate this space appropriately. The criminal underground operations that thrive within our system are not merely undermining its integrity, but are also likely perpetrating heinous crimes, particularly trafficking vulnerable individuals, especially women and children, into prostitution. Organ trafficking is, as of yet, unquantified. I think we had one case last year of it. And it is a growing international problem, particularly in countries like Afghanistan, which has a high number of international refugees uh, worldwide. This is why especially licensing international protection professionals is necessary, if not overdue. By demanding licenses for uh, professionals working in this international protection and refugee system, we can establish a robust framework that holds individuals and organisations accountable for their actions. 
Licenses will help ensure that only qualified and ethical individuals are entrusted with the responsibility of protecting and advocating for refugees and asylum seekers. Previously, I highlighted concerns regarding Ukrainian children brought to Mayo by a charity. This charity did not notify Tusla on the arrival of these children. Many of these children flew without a parent or a guardian. Under the law as it stands, notification to Tusla might be sufficient to comply with the current laws, but is that really enough? When it comes to people crossing you, our borders, especially children, we need to ensure the high standard of protection of all involved. The national referral mechanism should perhaps include children by default as a way of ensuring children fleeing war get the particular support that they need and that they're also tracked in a system should there be of any risk that they have been trafficked. By clearly Thank setting out guidelines and expectations through licensing requirements, we can instill trust and confidence in the system, reassuring both the public and those seeking safety and support. By training our healthcare professionals, we can aim to meet the highest standards in identifying and assisting victims of the crime. I welcome the EU and national laws on this matter. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Um, and thank Senator, you for your patience, Senator, Chair. Uh, Jerry Harkin, Senator, you